Call the devil chilling in heaven one day, and uh, the devil says, "Look at my uh, great follower there, Job, great man. Yeah, nothing questions his faith. He never questions his faith." And the devil says, "Ah, but I, I bet I can make him question his faith and to have a bet," um, which is strange. But uh, the devil comes down and starts doing all sorts of terrible things to Job, and Job loses his family, etc., etc. Uh, to cut a long story short, um, after a lot of suffering caused by the devil on Job, Job finally says, what the fuck, you know, wh wh why are you doing this to me, God? God comes down and starts really ripping into Job, saying, you know, who are you? You know, did you make the planets? Did you make the stars? Did you do this? Are you the creator, in, in short? I mean, that's basically what he's saying to Job. Um, the story is used by atheists to say, look, you know, the Bible is illogical. Um, and many Christians don't seem to understand what the meaning of the story is. And the Bible is just stories, as with fairy tales. You know, if you go back before, Disney just made them into extremely stupid, entertaining, brain-dead um, stories for children. Fairy tales actually did have some significance. The significance of uh, the story of Job, which is overlooked and ironically overlooked, is that Christians can't know God. You know, to know God is to be God. And if you claim to know God, then you're claiming to be God. And that's where the Christians are making the mistake, and they won't see that irony. And they'll get offended by this, of course. But anybody who says, well, I know God, is making the most arrogant statement ever. Because God has to be that infinitive, that all that which is, which is far greater than any human mind. So, the course of any Christian is, as it's been said a few times, the way of truth. Which is very different from that uh, sense that's been thrown in that all Christians should be like children and innocent, um, naive, and bend over, uh, close your eyes, and take what's given to you. Christianity, as with all religion, is supposed to be a path towards the knowing of God. God is supposed to be truth. Therefore, true religion is Gnostic, as in the search of knowing truth, knowledge, truth. I mean, it's either is or it isn't, if you want to put it in that way. I don't be very careful with that black and white logic uh, expression, but if you're talking about ultimate truth, objective truth, then it's an infinite journey. And that's what Christianity, uh, the Hebrew faith, the uh, Islamic faith, the Hindu faith, any true believer in any of those faiths is on a journey towards truth. And truth is found through experience of living and knowing. It's the interface of the mind, uh, which uh, is that concept uh, somewhere cited in that physical thing called the brain and attached to that thing called the spirit, which is attached to that thing called uh, the soul. The soul is the thing that am animates us, okay, gives us life. In short, the true believer, if he is not following a method of learning the world around him, questioning the world around him, then he's not following his religion and therefore he is not religious he is a hypocrite and the irony is that in the so-called atheist world the atheist scientist uh, those that claim to have the theory of everything or those that follow science but aren't really asking the questions or aren't really trying to go beyond just taking the first answer and saying, okay, that's finished, put it in the box, yeah, we've got the answer there, are uh, also 
living in a world of ignorance. Um, science and religion are fundamentally just two different methods of arriving at the same point, that of knowing. Why these childish groups argue is, well, I would say it's beyond me, but you know, it's quite simple. It's playground logic. Humans are like little children. They need their heads banged together. Within your religious groups, you've got one religious group insulting another religious group because of the simple fact is humans aren't perfect. And within each religious group, you're going to get people that do things that put a bad name on the other group. Okay? It's easy to criticize an entire group because of a few idiots in the other group. And it's much easier when those groups really comprise uh, a majority of idiots. And when the behavior of that group is blind and ignorant. Then and from ignorance you will have hate and fear. And in hate and fear people become blind. And that blindness is used by a few who wish to manipulate the mass. And it just goes around in a vicious circle. The church, the state, exploits people for this. And people seem happy to be exploited. And it's not just a religious question. Um, it's whatever button those who wish to control you can press. And you allow them to press.